Well, this morning in our My Money segment, we take on identity theft, one of the fastest growing crimes in America. You know, it's so easy to tell yourself, oh, it won't happen to me, but it happens all the time to people from all walks of life. In fact, according to figures from the FTC, identity theft happens every four seconds in the United States. Joining the Balancing Act today is Ken Chaplin, Senior Vice President of Experience Protect My ID, and Carrie Kilmer, an actual victim of identity theft and Protect My ID member. Good morning to the both of you. Good morning. Ken, I want to start with you. What is identity theft? Well, Danielle, I, all of us have information that's unique to us that identifies us. Things like your social security card, credit card, or driver's license numbers. Mm -hmm. When people use that information without your authorization for their own personal gain, that's identity theft. They could be doing things like taking out lines of credit, getting a job, or even obtaining medical care. It happened to me. Uh, my purse was stolen um, many years ago and they immediately started charging and opening accounts and doing all of these things and I felt so violated and I'm sure that's something you hear all the time. What are some of the other ways that people can get a hold of your personal information and assume your identity? Sure, well identity theft is a, is a crime of opportunity and unfortunately there's more opportunities than ever for people to steal someone's identity. Mm -hmm. The, the old ways exist and they're still out there, S having a purse stolen or a piece of mail dropped in the wrong mailbox, but technology today is making it even easier. Mm -hmm. So skimmers attached to ATM machines or data breaches at large corporations, uh, there, there's many, uh, many ways you need to be aware of. But importantly, it's not always a stranger or a thief that's out there doing this. It's someone that you may know, a family member, a relative, or even someone that has access to your house. They could easily walk by a desk see a document that has your personal information on it and use that for their own personal gain. You know, I want to ask you what the typical reaction is because I know for me, my first reaction was shock and then I have to be honest, my second reaction was, well, maybe I left my wallet at home. You just don't want to think that you a actually are a victim. Is that the kind of reaction that you hear from people, Ken? Yeah, it is. You know, and our, our Experian Identity Theft Resolution agents uh, share a similar story. People feel victimized just like any other crime and a, and a serious sense of loss. Uh, they're overwhelmed by the financial uh, impact that this could have on their lives and the amount of time it's going to take for them to resolve it. 41% of victims say it takes uh, up to two years or more uh, to fully resolve the situation. Yeah, I was telling you all it took seven years for, for me and I felt completely victimized. And I wa wanted to bring you into the conversation here, Carrie, because I know that you were a victim of identity theft in kind of one of the worst possible ways. Tell me about what happened to you. Well, it was uh, May of 2008, so it's been several years. I was uh, in a gated community in the area that I live, and as I was leaving, two young men ran up behind me, mugged me, and grabbed my purse and took off. Um, it was com took me completely by surprise. I have to laugh. Some of my friends like to refer to it as the, the gift that keeps on giving. And the reason why is because you were victimized twice. You were the victim of a mugging and then you became the victim of identity That's theft. That's correct. Tell me about that. Well, the, the attacks began immediately. Um, they were, uh, I had all, over 20 attacks in, in one month, at, and which was quite a bit. But thankfully, I have this wonderful agent, Peggy. She was my lifeline. I feel blessed to have her. She was not only professional and very efficient in helping me, but she understood the emotional component as well and was very sympathetic in working with me. Uh, we resolved probably, well, all of them actually, mm -hmm. all of the, uh, the credit compromises. You know, Carrie, it's interesting you say that because I have to tell you, I had things in my purse when I was a victim of identity theft that I shouldn't have had in there. I really wasn't using good common sense. And so what are some tips and tricks to help viewers and people like Carrie and myself as we move forward? Yeah, sure. There's really four things you should consider when setting out to set up a personal identity protection plan. Uh, the first being vigilance. Make sure that um, the data you put out or the things you throw away in the trash don't contain any information. We know thieves go through trash looking for this information. Uh, 
Thieves also break into homes to try to get not only gold and jewelry, but they're looking for, for data on you. So make sure uh, tax returns, account statements, insurance documents are locked up the same way you lock up any other valuable information. You mentioned common sense, definitely. Don't carry anything on your person uh, except what's absolutely necessary and certainly never have your social security number on any documents on your person. Um, the third is, is uh, with regards to smartphones and laptop. Uh, make sure that they're protected with codes and with passwords and encryption where possible. And the last is having a partner. You heard Carrie's story, and I think having a partner was uh, certainly helpful in her situation, but uh, a partner can also help from, an, from a protection standpoint in advance of having your identity stolen. Great advice, and you talked about the gift that keeps on giving. Carrie and I are now the Grinches. We're not giving <laughs> any more gifts. We have learned Absolutely. thanks to you. Well, thank you so much, Ken, for coming by and sharing this valuable information with us. Thank you. And Carrie, thank, thank you. you as well. Thank you. And to learn more about what you can do to prevent identity theft or to get help if you suspect that you may be a victim, simply go to the website www.protectmyid.com.